Dennis Horak is Canada's former ambassador to Saudi Arabia. He was expelled, you may recall, from that country earlier this year after Canada criticized the Saudi humans right, human rights record. Rather, Dennis Horak joins me from Toronto. Uh, Mr. Horak, good to see you. Uh, nice see you. Thanks for taking time to speak with me today. We, we now have the Saudis admitting that Jamal Khashoggi is dead after denying that for two weeks, but saying he wasn't tortured to death and dismembered, but instead died in a fist fight inside the consulate in Turkey. How credible is that explanation to you? It's not credible at all. The idea that he died in a fistfight, I think, is frankly ridiculous. We've seen the, the story evolve over the past few weeks. I think we'll continue to see it evolve uh, over the next few weeks. In, in fact, I think the Saudi Foreign Minister, Al, Minister Al Jaber, admitted as much yesterday when he said, as the investigation goes forward, we'll add in the facts uh, come to light, they'll release them. So I think we haven't seen the end of where this story is going to evolve to. Right. What the Saudis really seem to be intent on doing, and you know the in internal workings of the Saudi power structure, uh, they're really trying to isolate uh, the country's de facto leader here. C could this have been the work of, as the Saudis put it, rogue security elements operating without the knowledge of the Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman because that's the official Saudi explanation. It is possible. I mean, it is hard to sort of get a sense what actually goes in right at the, the, the tighter inner circle. Um, the, the, the firings uh, of uh, a couple of days ago included uh, Saad al Qatani, who was very close to the Crown Prince, and, and that's pretty much as high up as I think that we're going to see. Whether he sort of said, right, go ahead, uh, kill him, or said, uh, you know, make this go away, uh, and then they interpreted it, 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 it's, it amounts to the same thing, I think, in, in any case. Okay, uh, in this country now, the Prime Minister convened the recently created uh, Incident Response Group, it's called, of Cabinet Ministers and Senior Bureaucrats, and suggested this incident uh, has the government re-examining its relationship with Saudi Arabia. Should that re-examination include whether we want to sell arms to the Saudis? I think it has to include everything, uh, and there should be both a look, a look at how do we, what's the value of this relationship to Canada? How do we, uh, how do we pursue it, and, and how do we make it that that it, hurt, that it benefits us and and, and potentially uh, benefits the Saudis in terms of uh, improving uh, their uh, the way they behave? So I think that's important in terms specifically of the arms trade, uh, the LAV deal in particular. I, I would I would not like to see this, that that deal become a, a victim of this of, of this review. I don't why, think why not? Would, because I don't think there'd be a whole lot of benefits for it. For it, it if we're if we're looking to see to try and get the Saudis to change their behavior, um, canceling the LAV deal is not going to have any impact on what whatsoever. If it's looking to punish, the only people to be punished by canceling this deal, frankly, at this stage, are Canadian workers. But is there an argument to be made there that, uh, yeah, Canada may hurt economically, uh, economically because of a decision uh, such as cancelling the LAV deal, but it would be a powerful statement from this country that says, even if we pay an economic price, we're prepared to pay that price uh, to send a message to the Saudis that we don't like what's going on. There's other ways to deliver that message. Part of it, one key way is to engage them directly. Minister Freeland has done that with Minister Al Jaber, her counterpart. I think if we had had higher level engagement, we could reach much higher into the Saudi infrastructure, Saudi decision making structures, which we haven't done in the past. And so I think that's hurt our ability to get that message across. I just, I, I'm, I, I'm not in favor of making Canadian workers uh, the scapegoat for this, not making them pay the, the ultimate price for this. And I, frankly, I don't think the Saudis would be overly moved by a cancellation of that deal. And when you see that Germany's announced a freeze on arms exports, uh, why shouldn't Canada do the same? Or is, are these kind of apples and oranges here? Um, the Germans have done that in the past, only to restart them later on. And again, I don't think that, that there's going to be much value in this. I, I'm not sure what the objective would be. We can send a message. There's other ways to send a message, I think, that don't hurt Canada. And the other thing is, it's important, part of the, the, the arms relationship we have with Saudi Arabia, is it's a reflective of our, our desire, and it's in our interest that Saudi Arabia remain a stable country in the region. Mm -hmm. Stability of Saudi Arabia is important for the region. It's important for the world. And our support for them or working with them in a variety of different fields, whether it's counterterrorism, as, as the Brits and the Americans have said, or whether it's, it's trying to make sure that, they're, 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 that the country is stable and able to defend itself, uh, is, is in Canada's interest. So I think from a strategic point of view, it's not in our interest to do so. Uh, the other... Sorry. sorry, I was just going to say, and that, that, that's the, I mean, broadening the economic ties with Saudi Arabia, that was, a, that was a policy started under the previous Conservative government. They wanted to really build up trade and uh, economic development between Canada 
uh, and the Saudis. And I guess that, so, I mean, is the, is the relationship far more, far more complex than a lot of Canadians understand? And so it's all focused right now on uh, Jamal Khashoggi, but you're suggesting it's, it's a whole lot deeper than that and the human rights piece is just one part. I think that's, that's absolutely right. It, it, it is a very broad relationship, and it, I, in my view, it should be broader. But we had, I think the, the, the most uh, impressive aspect of the relationship was the people-to-people -people exchanges, the number of Saudi students that we had here. That brought a lot of economic benefits to Canada, that's for sure. But it's, it, there's also a values a component to this as well. Those Saudi students have between 10 and 15,000 that would come here every year. They would spend three or four years here. They would go back to Saudi Arabia being engines of change in Saudi Arabia. And there's Saudi students all over the Western world that, that do exactly the same thing. So they go back, they, they bring some of our understanding of Canada and some of our values with them. And as I said, they're, they're agents of change. And we've lost that. Um, there's the broader economic aspects as well. But then we have, we, it's in our interest to support the reform efforts that are ongoing there. We've done that in a number of areas on the education side, for example, which have longer term benefits in terms of changing what Saudi Arabia is, stabilizing the country, which I said is, is, is quite important. So it's a broad based relationship. It's more than the labs deal. It's more than the, the human rights elements, both of which are important. But it's, imp it's important as well to sort of engage this country and yeah. find out what's going on and try and influence. Well, what about a more targeted approach? I mean, some have argued that, you know, uh, and, and, and you were part of this, this dispute. Some have argued that Canada's already offside with the Saudis over the criticism of the human rights record during the summer, the fight that got you expelled from the country. Uh, they would say, you know, what, what's, what's, what's Canada got to lose at this point? I mean, if the relationship is soured, should Canada spend its time trying to get it back on track? Or should it say, should it go further in, in terms of, of where it is now and say, if it's off track, it's really off track because we don't like the way you're acting? That's one option. I don't think it's the right one. I think we need to try and rebuild this relationship. We're concerned about a number of human rights, <coughs> excuse me, a number of human rights issues in Saudi Arabia, whether it's Raif Badawi, whether it's his sister now with this, this horrible event in Turkey with Jamal, Jamal Khashoggi. If we want to try and influence them and say, hey, look, you know, this is really not on. Why don't you do this? Why don't you do that? Maybe, maybe change your approach this way. It comes from engaging them. It doesn't come from sending a tweet. It doesn't come from sending a statement. It makes us feel good to do that, perhaps. It, it's a little bit more satisfying, particularly uh, following an event uh, like what happened in Turkey. But if we're trying to be effective, if, we're, if we really want to sort of uh, have an influence in, in, in making changes there, you do that by engaging, not by disengaging. Let's finish on this. What about some have suggested sanctions under the uh, Magnitsky Act, which calls for uh, sanctions against people connected to human rights abuses, including the killing of dissidents, I suppose. Uh, this would seem to be a perfect example of why and how that could be used. Do you, do you accept that? It can be used. I'm not sure how effective it would be, particularly for Canada, to do that. A number of these people that we would put travel bans on probably wouldn't be coming to Canada anyways. It sends a message that's fine. But again, it's, all, it's, it's about what are we trying to do here? Are we trying to be effective? Are we trying to make change their behavior, curb the, the excesses of their behavior, and try and encourage the reform efforts. That's about engagement. That's not about disengaging. All right, Dennis Horak, uh, good to have your perspective tonight. Thanks for taking the time. Thank you.